Hey guys, Hayley here. Um, so today I actually have a video about manga for you guys. Uh, I actually did a video in the past where I hauled some manga and talked about what I was reading and I said that I would do these regularly and I kind of didn't, um, but better late than never uh, because I have been picking up a lot of manga recently. So I wanted to show you guys what I picked up um, and also talk about what I've been reading recently. Um, there's no structure to this video, I'm just going to talk about whatever I want. Okay, let's get started. So the first series I have to haul is Blue Flag. Um, and I have Blue Flag Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, Volume 4, 5, and 6. So I actually bought Volume 1 by itself a while ago, um, and as soon as I read it, I instantly went online and bought like two to six immediately. Uh, and I don't do that very often, but I just fell in love with this series so quickly. So you can kind of tell from the cover, but it's a pretty standard love triangle manga, but I really fell in love with the characters. And even in the first volume, there's already character development and each of the characters feels like really realized. Um, and especially the relationships between the characters, it is just depicted so realistically. So I've not read two to six yet, but I'm super excited to. And I think the series only goes up to eight, so I'll probably just pick up the last two and then binge read the entire series. Although I have heard that the ending is not too well loved, but let's see, uh, we'll see, we'll see. So the most recent thing I've read is actually Death Note, which is kind of a reread because I read the first two volumes um, a while ago, but now I have. So now I have the entire black edition so I can read the story all the way through. I'm sure probably 100% of my audience already knows the plot to Death Note, but it's basically um, a high school boy picks up a notebook. If he writes a name in it, that person dies and a bunch of shenanigans ensue from there. But damn, this is such a good series. Like the story is just so smart and interesting and the characters are also so interesting and they're smart. Um, it's so good. There is not much else to say here that someone else hasn't already said better than me, but if you've not read Death Note the manga, read it. Uh, and if you have read it, reread it. <laughs> also, I'm a really big fan of these black editions where they have two volumes in each one. Um, I think they look really nice. So the next two mangas are from series that I have been meaning to get into. Uh, they're definitely at the top of my to read list and I finally taken the plunge and bought the first volumes of these series. I also bought the physical volumes, which may or may not commit me to buying the rest of the physical volumes, but that's really expensive and that's less money to spend on figures. So the first in this category is Vinland Saga book one. This is by Makoto Yukimura. He also did Planetes, Planets? I've just, I've never had to say that out loud I, before. I don't know how you say it. Planetet? Pl planets? It's just planets. Anyway, this is ranked number 14 uh, on the top manga list on my anime list. So it's obviously pretty popular. From what I know, this is a manga about Vikings, particularly uh, this guy who's called Torfin. And I think he's on his quest to avenge his father. Um, I have read Planets, or however you say it, and I'm a big fan of that. Um, so I'm looking forward to this, but I have heard that this is, you know, quite different from his other works. Um, I'm really excited. Even though on paper, like, the Viking setting is not something that I'm super attracted to. But I'm hoping this is good. And the other series in this category is... Ba -ba -bum! This is Berserk, uh, Volume 1 or Omnibus One uh, by Kentaro Miura. Miura? I don't know. This is massive and it's so heavy. Most of you probably know this is the number one rated manga on my anime list. I have always been meaning to read it, but it's always been so intimidating. Um, and so I definitely splurged out and got like the deluxe manga. I thought buying it in physical would make it easier to read, but this format 
is almost more intimidating. So from what I know, Berserk follows a mercenary called the Guts, um, and I think he's on a quest for revenge, which is kind of very similar to Vinland Saga. Just everyone's everyone's trying to avenge someone. But this this edition is stunning. Like the art in this is so crisp and high quality. Uh, I have a long weekend coming up, and that's when I think I'm gonna crack this bad boy open. I really don't think that this would be structurally sound if I did that. So I'm gonna oh actually maybe we're okay. Blue flag is like I did not sign up for this. <laughs> so the next few volumes that I'm hauling are actually ones that I've already read. And that is Blood on the Tracks by Shuzo Oshimi. And I have volume one, volume two, ugh, volume three, um, and volume four. And the covers are so nice that I wanted to show you all of them. So I'm a big fan of Shuzo Oshimi. Uh, I've read The Flowers of Evil, Happiness, and Inside Mari. But I think Blood on the Tracks is my favorite work of his so far. This is a psychological manga that follows Seichi, this little baby here, um, and how he deals with his overprotective mother. Um, and a certain incident occurs which just makes him realize how scurrily overprotective she is. Um, it definitely gets a bit daft, it gets a bit um, dark, I suppose. But Shoujo's art is absolutely incredible. He shows the characters' emotions and trauma and suffering and blah, blah, blah. He shows that with art as opposed to words. And so there's a lot of panels that don't have a lot of words, but they do a lot to illustrate what the character's going through. And that's a style that I think people are either gonna love or it's not their cup of tea. So I've ordered the fifth volume, which is the last one that's out. I'll have to wait for the rest of them, um, but I am very tempted to like just continue online um, and not read the prints. There's also a super awesome Super Eye Patch Wolf video uh, kind of around this manga that's uh, really awesome. I really recommend that. That might be how I heard about it in the first place. Next up, I'm gonna sneak in an art book. It's not a manga, but it's a book, so it's halfway there. Um, I just got this recently. This is the fashion illustration book, The Art of Tanaka, and it is so cute. So the title says it all. It's an illustration book um, with a lot of different fashion in it. Um, so this is awesome for reference art and like inspiration for drawing. When I go through this book, I'm like really inspired by all the cute designs and I really want to draw my own outfits. But I'm really bad at drawing folds and fabrics. I just don't know how that works. But this is really good reference for that, so this will help. Super, super cute. The next manga I have to haul is Daytime Shooting Star. I have volume three, four, five, hey, yeah, <laughs> six, seven, eight and nine and ten. I actually hauled the first two volumes of this manga in my last video um, and after I read it I got hooked. Like this is the shit. Like I love it. I love all of the characters in this manga and I love the development they go through. Like it's really nice to see them actually learn from their past mistakes uh, and grow. I also really really like the art in this. It's so cute. It's definitely a highlight. I actually have already started reading the new ones that I've pulled. I think I'm up to book six now. Uh, but since I'm reading the physical, I do have to wait for the last two volumes to get published, which I think happen in June. So I don't want to wait that long to know what the ending is. Which I think the ending to this is kind of controversial as well, so I hope I don't get spoiled and I don't want to wait. Next up, I have some light novels. Again, this is not manga, but they're books, so they're halfway there. So I got the Monogatari Series 1 box set, um, and I also got all of the books from Season 2. I actually bought these secondhand from someone locally, and I was so stoked when I saw someone selling these locally. Um, I've always wanted to buy these, but they're actually really expensive to buy and ship to Australia so I, I already had the first couple of volumes but 
Um, it was actually cheaper to just buy the box set and replace the volumes I already had. So we have Kizumonogatari Wound Tail, we have Bakamonogatari Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3. Then we have Nisei Monogatari Volume 1 and Volume 2, and finally Neko Monogatari um, Cattail Black. I think there's a, another one that goes with this. I have just read the Bakamonogatari volume, which I really enjoyed. Um, I'm hoping that was the correct place to start. Um, we'll, we'll soon find out. Next up, I'm going to sneak in another art book. And this one is Asian illustration. Should be illustrations because there's actually 46 different um, Asian illustrators in this book. And I love it. So it's like an art collection book where each artist gets to highlight uh, a few pages of their art and there's a bit about where they're from, the tools they use, and like a little bio. So I love flicking through and finding like really cool art and then just following them on Twitter or Instagram. Look, um, Gal Galeria, I think that's how you say it, is in here, but I've bought some of his art in the past before, so that's really cool. So the first thing I've been reading on my tablet is Kono Oto Tamare, uh, which was actually a manga recommendation from Danielle from Anambe. Uh, she always has top tier recommendations, like she knows her manga. But this manga is about a group of students that joined the Kodo club at school. Um, and the Kodo is a traditional Japanese string instrument that you pluck. And this is such a fabulous series. I really love the characters. I think they're all so well fleshed out and they have like, they're really deep, I guess. Um, and I, I really love the interactions between the characters. Like there's some really interesting chemistry. Um, and also the art in this is so good. Um, I found it really similar to Chihayafuru, so if you liked Chihayafuru, then check this out, and vice versa. So the next manga that I've been reading is Tenku Shimpan, or um, High Rise Invasion. Uh, I think Netflix actually just did uh, an anime adaptation of this series, although I don't think it's too good. I don't know though, I've not watched it. So this is a, I guess, action thriller mystery manga where people are basically stuck on roofs, like on high rises, and there's these uh, mass murderers that try to kill them or they try to make them jump off buildings. And that's kind of the premise. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Um, it's on, okay, like honestly, it's a bit of a guilty pleasure manga. Like the plot is kind of interesting, but it, it just, it kind of just loses me. It goes a I don't know. This is definitely not the most polished manga. Um, the plot is, I guess, pretty intriguing and interesting, um, but like, I don't know if I like all the answers I have that, that it gives me. It's a bit, it's a bit of a, a leap at times. I keep reading it, it <laughs> I don't know. Um, not sure if I'll get to the end of this, like I'm beginning to lose steam, but definitely the first few um, chapters and volumes, I was like, the last manga that I've been reading a lot of, and this honestly kind of surprised me, um, is Quintessentials Quintuplets. So this manga, I think the anime adaptation's pretty good as well. You might already know that this series follows a boy, uh, Futaro, who becomes a tutor for the quintuplets, and we're told at the start that he marries one of the five, um, and I guess the rest of the manga is have fun, work out who it is. I, I didn't really expect to enjoy this manga so much because it is essentially a harem manga, uh, but this is definitely like not on the etchy side of manga. Um, it feels more romancy to me, which is probably why I like it. I've seen some stuff online and I'm still not 100% sure who he ends up with. Like I know the manga has ended and I think people were furious. Like they're bound to be Right? Like if there's five girls, only 20% of the fans are going to be happy if he picks one of them because the other four fifths are like outraged. Um, but I think I know who he picks, but I'm not sure. So I, I'm quite enjoying that there's still an element of doubt so I can read the manga and kind of go up and down and be like, oh, who's he going to pick? There's also so many good quintessential quintuplet figures uh, coming out and being announced and going up for pre-order. And I haven't actually pre-ordered any of them. 
uh, even the pop-up raids because I don't want to commit to buying five figures of all five sisters. Like I want to work out who my favorite is and only buy their figures. And even though I'm like 70% of the way through the manga now, I still not quite sure who I'm like ready to pledge allegiance to. I need more data to make the decision. I'm a big Yotsuba fan, so I picked her volume cover. Um, but I also really like Nino, and and I did really like her at the start, but she's definitely rising up there. Um, uh, so I'll push through the manga, see what happens at the end, and then make my choice. And then I'll maybe pre-order one of the amazing quintessential quintuplets figures. Hopefully it's not too late by the time I uh, make up my mind. Alright, uh, that is all of the manga uh, that I wanted to haul and talk about today. Even though I did haul a lot of manga today, there is more that I picked up that I didn't show because it's been like, you know, seven or eight months since I made my video. So um, I only picked out a few. So if you did enjoy this and want me to make more, let me know. I'm happy to um, blabber on about more manga, I guess. Cool. Okay. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a fabulous week. Um, yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.